faith and the just shall the just shall live by faith in you and the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ the just shall the just shall live by faith sing it out the just shall the just shall live by faith in you Lord Jesus Christ the just shall live by faith book of Romans the book of Romans after the great book of faith Hebrews 13 chapters I was going to go 10 different directions and Romans appeared on the horizon I'm singing out of chapter 1 of the book of Romans I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ thank God Paul for it is the power of God unto salvation what? for everyone who believes first for the Jewish people and then also for the Greeks and the Gentiles the learned and the unlearned not ashamed of the gospel for it says in verse 17 Romans 1 for it is in the righteousness of God it's in the gospel it's revealed from faith to faith the gospel of Christ for in it is the righteousness, righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it's written, it says, The just shall, the just shall live by faith in you, Lord. We're living by faith in you, Lord Jesus. The just shall. The just shall live by faith. And here we are again today. Uh, every minute of every day, the just shall. The just shall live by faith. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah. The just shall. Woo! The just shall live by. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ it's a power of God unto eternal life get it for in its salvation for everyone who believes to the Jewish person the Gentile and even the Greek yeah, I'm not ashamed of the gospel the gospel of Christ for in it is the power of God unto eternal life. Yeah, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto eternal life. Romans chapter 1. Everybody get your Bible open to Romans 1. People are just jumping on. I want you guys to hear it, man. I, I had... Well, I looked at Zephaniah, Zechariah, I looked at Esther and Ecclesiastes, some of the ideas people gave me, but all of a sudden I landed on it. I was on Bible Gateway, and I put in, um, it was Romans chapter 17, and it says no. <laughs> and so I started looking, I went, no, there's 16 chapters. So after the book of Hebrews, the great book on faith, and all those that modeled it in we're in the just shall the just shall live by faith and here we are again today and the just shall the just shall live by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ yeah, the just shall the just shall live by faith in you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Sing it out with me. And the just shall, 
the just shall live by faith. And here is an astonishing thing I kept looking at going, this is the Old Testament requoted. So Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, I'm looking at verse 17. When it says the just shall live by faith, it's in quotes. Whenever that happens in the New Testament, that means it's a requote from the Old Testament. It's requoted from Habakkuk 2, verse 4. And then we read it in Hebrews 10, verse 38. It's also stated in Galatians 3, 11, four times in the Bible. It starts in the Old Testament, the just shall live by faith. That's Habakkuk 2.4. It's restated in Romans, which we're in right now. And a few weeks ago, as we read Hebrews 10.38, there it was, the just shall live by faith. And then the fourth time it's mentioned is Galatians 3.11. Somebody say it might be important. <laughs> the just shall. And the just shall, the just shall live by faith in you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're not ashamed of the gospel because the just shall, the just shall live by faith. Come on, get it in your mind, in your spirit. Right now during this live stream, we cry it out the just shall, the just shall, we live by faith. And that's why we're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it reveals the power of God unto salvation. What does it do? It reveals the power of God unto this great salvation. What does it do? It reveals the gospel of Christ, reveals the power of God and the righteousness of God unto salvation. And the just shall, woo, the just shall live by faith. Here we are, here we are doing it in New Testament believers, are Lord, and the just shall. The righteous, the just, will live by faith. I'm not ashamed. Of, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation and eternal life. Oh, I will never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation and eternal life. And it reveals the righteousness of God. From faith to faith, it reveals the gospel, reveals the righteousness of God. From faith to faith, and here we are, believers. Believers in the power of this great sacrifice of Jesus and the just. The just shall, the just shall live by faith in Jesus Christ. The just shall, my God. We are living by faith in you. Come on, sing it out. Join up. Today we sing it out loud. The just shall, the just shall live by faith. Yeah. We're living by faith. Yeah. The just shall. The just shall, we're living by faith. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
It is the power of God for salvation and eternal life. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of Father God unto salvation and eternal life in the gospel. The righteousness is revealed, yeah. For in the gospel of Christ, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, strength to strength, yeah. From faith to faith, from strength to strength, yeah. For in the gospel, the righteousness of Father God is revealed, is revealed. From faith to faith, yeah. From strength to strength, yeah. For in the gospel of Christ, the righteousness of God was revealed. From faith to faith. Come on, sing it. The just. And the just shall. The just shall live by faith. We live by faith in you, Lord Jesus Christ. The just shall, the just shall live by faith. Yes, we do. We believe in you, the power of God unto salvation. The just shall, the just shall live by faith. Faith, yes, we do. Faith in you, it's rising. The Lord said, Stay on it, kids, sing it for a while. Let faith arise in people's hearts. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the singing and the preaching and the speaking of God's word. What was it? Faith comes by hearing the singing, the speaking, and the preaching of the word. I said, Faith comes by hearing the message of the gospel of freedom. 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 How many are so glad, so thankful for your freedom, man? Oh, my God. Freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. Sing it one more time with me, the just. The just shall, the just shall live by faith in you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. The just shall, the just shall, yes, we live by faith in you. The power of God unto salvation is revealed as the just shall. The just we live by faith in you and the power of your word and your promises. And the just shall live by Romans chapter 1. We went from the great book of faith, the book of Hebrews. It wasn't even on my radar. I went, what? I looked at seven or eight different books, took a look at how long the chapters were, and then Romans appeared like a light on the horizon. He said, Romans, yeah, because the just shall live by faith. And your praise will ever be on my lips. Let's worship a little bit before we do the narration today. Your praise will ever be. Make a stand for lifestyle worship. Take a stand. And torture the kingdom of darkness with your lifestyle of praise and worship every day. Thanks for sharing, Ken. Pretty good, I know. Woo! I'll say it again. We bring pleasure to the heart of our God as we worship and we torment the kingdom of darkness. They can't stop worship and they can't stop intercession. Hey! Your love is devoted. Your love is devoted. 
like a ring of solid gold. It's like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old. Your love is enduring through the winter's rain and beyond the horizon. You've got mercy for today. Faithful you have been, Lord. Faithful you. You guys ready? Bust out in the chorus. You pledge yourself to me. That's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Join up your own praise will ever be on. We speak to you, Lord. We worship you, living God. Your praise will ever be on my ear. Your praise will ever be. Sing that first verse. Your love is devoted like a ring of solid gold. Like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old, your love is enduring, and through the winter's rain, and beyond my horizon, you've got mercy for today, you to tell the Lord, you will be praised, yeah. you will be praised, you will be praised, with angels and saints, we sing worthy are you. So the 
songwriters got this phrase, ever be, from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The Message Bible says, your praise will ever be on my lips. So the songwriters took it right out of Psalm 34, and we're going to sing it today. I will bless you, Lord, at all times. Not every other day. Not every third day. Not every other week. I will bless you, Lord, at all times. Your praise is in my mouth. I will bless you, Lord, at all times. Your praise is in my mouth. I will bless you, Lord, at all times. Your praise is in my mouth. I give you my praise. Yeah. And I will bless you, Lord, at all times. Praise is in my mouth. Yeah. I will bless you in that awesome Psalm 34. I bless you, Lord, at all times. I will bless you, Lord, at all times. Your praise is in my mouth. I give you all my praise. I will bless you. Come on, lift it up. And I will bless you. Lord, at all times, your praise is in my mouth, yeah, I will bless you, Lord, at all times, your praise is in my mouth, I will bless you, Lord, at all times, your praise is in my mouth. that bridge again, you will be praised, and I will give you all my praise. You will be praised, you will be praised, with angels and saints, we sing words. You know what that means? There's no room for negativity, curses, a bunch of negative speaking. Well, the cup's not half empty or half full. It's over when you stay in the realm of praise and worship in His presence. It's powerful stuff. 
Wow. Ever be. Ever be. It gets rid of complaining. Negative, negative things that people just say spend hours in. Or it's never right. It's never good enough. Well, when you worship him, he lifts and picks up your heart and he makes it good enough. Because he said, you're my son or you're my daughter. I'm truly excited today to be entering into the book of Romans, which will carry us through the end of the summer into the fall. And then Carla and I were thinking, could we handle the book of Revelation? I was uh, That's where I was going. <laughs> I said, well, maybe not, but it would be cool to do that in the fall. Well, let's go to Romans chapter 1. Carla's going to read us in, and then I'll do the commentary. through 17. For I, the key verses here are, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For it is the righteousness, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Requoted from Habakkuk 2.4. Hebrews 10.38 and Galatians 3.11. And from the Joseph, Joseph Benson commentator, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, but rather Paul said, I glory in it. To the world indeed, it appeared folly and weakness. Wow. In the judgment of the world, Paul ought to have been ashamed of it. He's in Rome the head and theater of the whole world. But Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, knowing it to be. What was it, Paul? He said, it's the power of God unto salvation. Never before in one simple but powerful message had it been stated that way. To everyone that believeth, that believes in the Lord Jesus. It's the great and gloriously powerful means of saving. I'll say it again. The great sacrifice and the crucifixion, resurrection of our Savior, it's the great and gloriously powerful means, this message of good news, of saving all who accept salvation in God's own way. Love that. Namely, the way of faith in Jesus. What was it? It's the way of faith in Jesus as the Son of God and Savior of the world. So both in the declaration and promises of God made through him, faith preceded by repentance toward God, accompanied by love to God and all mankind and productive of all inward and outer holiness is the good news, the gospel of Christ. To the Jewish person first, who is far from being above the need of this gospel, and by the special command of the Lord, it is first preached where, wherever its ambassadors come. Yet it is not to be limited, this message of good news, to the Jewish person, but proclaimed also to the Greek, the Roman, and the Gentiles. The Greeks and the Roman Gentiles of every nation under heaven. Wow, wow, okay. Who are all with equal freedom invited to partake of the gospel of Christ and its many important benefits. Joseph Benson's commentary from 1818. Woo! Verse 1. That statement that just shall live by faith is very special to me. Maybe I'll get a chance to share later. Verse 1. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. 
concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, who came and was born of the seed of David according to the flesh. Paul, a servant of Jesus, the anointed, called by God to be his emissary and appointed to tell the good news of the things promised long ago by God, spoken by prophets and recorded in the Holy Scriptures. All of this good news is about his son, who was from a human perspective born of David's royal line. Paul, a loving, loyal servant of the Anointed One, serving the master of love, Jesus, the anointed one. The Greek word Christu, Christ is not Jesus' last name. It is a title for the Hebrew Messiah. He called me to be his apostle and set me apart with a mission to reveal God's wonderful gospel. I write to all his beloved chosen ones in Rome, for you are, all, are also called as holy ones. May his joyous grace and total well-being, flowing from our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, rest upon you. And the Passion says, My commission is to preach the good news. Yet it is not entirely new, but the fulfillment of the hope promised to us through his prophets in the sacred scriptures. For the gospel is all about God's Son. As a man, he descended from David's royal lineage. And I love it. It says the hope promised to us through his prophets. And here we are today, how the hope that was promised to us through his prophets in the sacred scripture is here. Well, the hope promised through his prophets through the years in the sacred scripture is living right here well the hope that was promised to us through the prophets and in the sacred scriptures is here the good news of great joy the good news of great joy salvation The good news of great joy, ah, the good news of great joy coming through you, Lord Jesus. Well, the hope that was promised to us through his prophets in the sacred scriptures is here. Well, the hope that was promised to us through his prophets is a living right here, living right here. The hope that was promised through the prophets written in the scripture is a living right here. The good news of great joy, the good news of great joy, yeah. the good news of Great joy is living right here. Oh, we get it. We know it, Lord. And we thank you for the power of the good news of great joy. Paul said, my commission and our commission to preach it to every tribe, tongue, and nation. Verse 3. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the son of God with power. <laughs> A lot of people declare everything they want to do and be, even people in other religions, but it has no power on it. Jesus was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. And through him, we've received grace and apostleship. Wow. For obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Wow. <laughs> among whom you also are called of Jesus Christ. 
See, he was born a descendant of David to fulfill the covenant promises. As to his div divine nature, according to the Holy Spirit of holiness, he was openly designated to be the Son of God with power in a triumph and a miraculous way, in a triumphant and miraculous way by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is through him that we receive grace and our apostleship to promote obedience to the faith and make disciples for his name's sake among all of the Gentiles. And you also are among those who are called of Jesus Christ to belong to him. That's the Amplified Bible, to belong to him. Here we go, the passion. But as the mighty son of God, he was raised from the dead and miraculously set apart with a display of triumphant power supplied by the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus is our Lord and our Messiah, and through him grace is cascading into us. His grace cascaded into us, empowering us with the gift of apostleship. What a phrase. Get that, man. Through him, Jesus Christ, his grace cascaded into us, empowering us with the gifts of apostleship so that we can win people from every nation into the obedience that springs from faith to bring honor to his name. And you are among the chosen ones who are called to belong to Jesus, the anointed one. Lord Jesus, you were openly designated to be the Son of God with triumphant power. And you were raised from the dead, designated the Son of God with power in a triumphant and miraculous way. By your resurrection from the dead, it is you, Lord. It is you, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is you, designated openly by resurrection power, Messiah of the whole earth, Messiah of the whole earth. And there it is, by your divine nature, Lord. Set us free, oh, the mighty Son of God, mighty Son of God, raised from the dead and set apart with triumphant power, set apart with triumphant power, oh, mighty Son of God, mighty, I love it, I love that, raised from the dead with triumphant power. You were raised from the dead with a display of triumphant power, God. Verse 7. As we're going through these readings today, we continue to be in prayer for Holly. She really needs prayer and Donna McCleskey, her brother, is dying. So. Verse 7. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, yes. grace to you and peace yes. from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that I am without ceasing. I make mention of you always in my prayers. 
I am writing to all who are beloved of God in Rome, called to be saints, God's people, and set apart for a sanctified life that is set apart for God and his purpose. Grace to you and peace, inner calm and spiritual well-being from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith, your trust, and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness is being proclaimed in all the world. For God, whom I serve with my spirit by preaching the gospel of his Son, is my witness as to how continually I mention you. I give thanks to God for all of you because the testimony of your faith is speeding throughout the world. And God knows that I pray for you continually and at all times. For I serve and worship him with my spirit in the gospel of his Son. My desire and constant prayer is that I would succeed in coming to you according to the plan and timing of God. It says, all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be saints, we are God's people, set apart for a sanctified life, set apart for God and your purposes, yeah. Called as saints, we are God's people, set apart for a sanctified life, set apart for God and his purposes. Grace be, grace be to you and peace in your innermost heart. Grace to you and peace inner calm. In your deepest heart, grace to you. This was Paul's prayer to you and peace in deep, in deep in your heart. This was his blessing and his prayer. Grace be to you. Yeah, yeah. Grace, we're set apart for a sanctified life. Set apart to your purposes, God. Grace to you and peace, peace deep in your heart. Grace to you and peace, inner calm and deep in your heart. Set apart for a sanctified life. He points it out. Set apart. For a sanctified life, yeah. set apart for a sanctified life. For the purposes of God. And I'm giving thanks, you guys. Holy Spirit is so smart. He searched the deepest things of the Father heart. I would have never thought to go from Hebrews to the book of Romans, but man, this is doing my heart a lot of good right here. Verses 10, 11, and 12. Now, making request. If by some means now at last, I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. (laughs) Who talks like that? It's so powerful, the word of God. For I long to see you, Roman believers, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. I find myself constantly praying. Wow. Here's a man of God status. It's, it's a guideline, a standard. Men of God should be constantly praying and worshiping, don't you think? There's some pastors and teachers and different, they need to get the program on it. He said, I find myself constantly praying for you. And I'm really hoping it is in God's will for me to be with you soon. I desperately want to see you so that I may share some gift of the Spirit to strengthen you. Wow. 
Plus, I know that when we come together, something beautiful will happen as we are encouraged by each other's faith. I love that. Hear it again. Verse 12, the voice translation. Plus, Paul said, I know that when we come together, oh, something beautiful will happen as we are encouraged by each, I believe that, each other's faith. I know that when we come together, when we come together, something beautiful is going on. Something beautiful is happening. As we are encouraged, I know when we come together, something beautiful will happen. I love it. I know when we come together, something beautiful well is going on as we are encouraged by each other's faith in Christ. <laughs> as we are encouraged by each other's faith in Listen to Paul. It was so encouraging. As we're growing, encouraged by each other's faith each other's faith I know when we come together what happens something beautiful is going on I know when we come together something beautiful is happening we are encouraged by each other's faith encouraged by each other's faith that's why the Hebrews said, don't forsake the fellowshipping together of the saints and people of like kind believe. Because something beautiful is happening. The passion, verses 10, 11, and 12, Romans chapter 1, man. He said, my desire and constant prayer is that I would succeed in coming to you according to the plan and timing of God. That is chock full, ain't it, God? I yearn to come and be face to face with you and get to know you. This guy, he's on some other planet of love or something. End of faith. He's in prison. For I long to impart to you some spiritual gift that will empower you to stand strong in your faith. Hear that again. I long to impart to you what, Paul, was well, some spiritual gift that will empower you to stand strong in your faith? Love it. Let it sink in. Now this means when we come together and are side by side, something wonderful will be released. We can expect to be co-encouraged and co-comforted by each other's faith. That is so good. Marriages, funerals, hard times in lives, good times in lives, mediocre. You can be co-encouraged and co-comforted by another believer's faith. Thank you for sharing, Paul. We get it. Thank you, bro. 13, 14, and 15. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. I am a debtor, both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. Brothers, I want you to know that although I have been prevented from visiting you until now, I have often planned to do so in order that I might have some fruit among you, just as I have among the other Gentiles. I owe a debt to both civilized Greeks and uncivilized people, to both the educated and the ignorant. Therefore, I am eager to proclaim the good news also to you who live in Rome. So, my dear brothers and sisters, please don't interpret my failure to visit you as indifference, because many times I have intended to come, 
but have not been released to do so up to now. For I long to enjoy a harvest of spiritual fruit, both converts and bringing the believers into maturity among you, like I have experienced among the nations. And the Passion says, Love obligates me to preach to everyone, those who are among the elite Greek speakers and those who are among the outcasts, uncultured foreigners. To those who are wise and educated as well as to those who are foolish and unlearned. This is why I'm so excited about coming to preach the wonderful message of Jesus, the good news, his message of goodness and well-being to you in Rome. And check verse 14. Love obligates me to preach to everyone everywhere. God's love obligates me to preach to everyone, everywhere. Your love, O oh Lord, obligates me to preach and share the good news of your goodness and well-being. Everywhere, everywhere, oh, the love of God obligates me to preach everywhere. Love, oh Lord, obligates me to preach the good news of great joy, your message of goodness and well being, oh Lord. Your love obligates me to preach everywhere. Your love, oh Lord, obligates me to preach everywhere to everyone. To preach to everyone, everywhere. Your love, O oh Lord, obligates me to preach everywhere. And there it is. Paul said, I'm a debtor. I gotta preach it out loud. Yeah, yeah. Your love, God, obligates me to preach to everyone, everywhere. Yeah. Your love obligates me, Lord, to preach to everyone, everywhere. Don't you love it? Because he said, man, I'm a debtor. I'm a debtor because I was chief of the Pharisees and chief of all sinners. He was in two great classifications, the apostle Paul. And I want everybody to focus up and look at me on this stream right here. Everybody, these last two verses, we're going to go slow. We're in good shape, Taiwan. Verse 16 stands alone. And then Carla will do verse 17. That's why Romans 1 is in two parts for us doing the stream. <laughs> for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. God. Why, Paul? For this gospel is the power of God unto salvation. <laughs> I was looking at Migdal Ader today, the tower of the flock, and I thought the sacrificial lamb, the, the priestly shepherds that kept them in the field, they knew the Messiah, power of God, was coming through salvation. It was the Lamb of God. And this Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And the reason is it's the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes faith. To the Jewish people first and also to the Greek. And the New Living Translation. I'm not the least bit embarrassed by the gospel. <laughs> I appreciate that. I won't shy away from it because it is God's power to save every person who believes. First to the Jewish people and then to the non-Jewish people. For this good news, I'm most blessed to proclaim. It's an extraordinary message of God 
his powerful plan to rescue everyone who trusts him. Hear this again, this good news I'm most blessed to proclaim. It's an extraordinary message of God's powerful plan to rescue. I love that. I love that word rescue. I put it out there. The Lord said, I gave my life to rescue everyone who would trust in me. And then the passion. I refuse to be ashamed of the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. Wow. What? I refuse to be ashamed ever of this wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Jesus Christ. For I'm thrilled to preach that everyone who believes is saved to the Jewish person first and then to people everywhere. I am most blessed to proclaim this extraordinary message of God's powerful plan to rescue God. That you rescue everyone who puts their trust in you, yeah. Puts their trust in you, yeah. I'm most blessed to proclaim this extraordinary message of God's powerful plan. What was that plan? Well, I will rescue everyone who puts their trust in me says the Lord oh, I will rescue everyone who puts their trust in me yeah. oh, I am most blessed to proclaim an extraordinary message of God's powerful plan to rescue everyone anyone that puts their trust in extraordinary message of God's powerful plan to rescue every man, every woman. He will rescue every teenager, every child that puts their trust in him. The great rescue plan. What is it? Yeah, it is God's great rescue plan. The message of good news of great joy. The rescue plan for all those that trust in him. Somebody shout hallelujah, man. And now giant scripture 17. For in the gospel of Christ, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith you see in the good news God's restorative justice is revealed and as we will see it begins with and ends in faith as the scripture declares by faith the just will obtain life Requoted from Habakkuk 2.4 Hebrews 10.38 in Galatians 3.11. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. Then, by faith, we live that new life through him. The holy writings say, Jesus. a man right with God Amen. lives by faith. Oh. This gospel unveils a continual revelation of God's righteousness, a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe. And it moves us from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. This is what the scripture means when it says, 
we are right with God through life-giving faith. Wow. You see, in the good news, God's restorative justice is revealed. And the just, the just will, the just will live by the just will live by faith that you and me, you and me, we're here right now today. Yeah. The just will, the just will live by faith in you, Lord Jesus. Come on, sing it out with me as we close out our stream. Yeah. The just will. The just will live by faith. But you rescued me. You rescued me. Yeah. The just will. The just will live by faith. God's restorative justice is revealed in the good news of Jesus Christ. God's restorative justice is revealed in the good news. I said, God's restorative justice is revealed in this good news. It begins and ends with faith. It, stay with me. That's the voice translation. Yeah. Yeah, God's restorative justice is revealed in this good news. Yeah, God's restorative justice is revealed in this good news. It begins and ends with faith. It begins and ends with faith. Oh, the just will live. Yes, the just will live by. It's what it says. Check it out. Habakkuk 2 4, Hebrews 10 38, and Galatians 3 11. So it's first written in, in Habakkuk and then brought back three different times in the New Testament. The just shall live by faith. What? The just shall live by faith. I, yeah, yeah. Oh, the just. Well, we're living by faith. Yeah, yeah. We are the people right with God. With life-giving faith. Yeah, we're the people serving the Lord. Shall live by faith. Keep going for a minute. And the just shall live by faith. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, the just shall live by faith. Faith in you, Jesus. Restorative justice, God's restorative justice is revealed in salvation and in this good news of great joy. Let us not forget that. By faith, the just, they obtain life. Wow. And from the holy writings, it says, a man right with God is living by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just. Amazing, isn't it? The, the verse 
verse 16 and 17, they, they stand alone. I wonder in the archives of the most powerful scriptures, which it's hard to call that, but I just think these things, Paul's revelation, aren't you glad <laughs> that he encountered the living God while riding on his donkey? He was chief, chief of the Pharisees, killing Christians. Man, I'm so grateful for the Pauline revelations which are in the hundreds. Romans part one, because I didn't want to rush by verse 16 and 17. I couldn't do it. So we're into the book of Romans. Let's be praying, man. Uh, I still feel like I have an afterglow of the book of Hebrews on me. I'm glad I, I spent uh, a month and a half or really two months of my life the summer of 2021. I actually did it in the book of Hebrews. I'm going back looking at my own narrations as I built the translations that we did. And I go, Lord, why is it that every church shouldn't do some portion of the 13 chapters like once a year or the highlights of it because it's the greatest book of faith. And now we get into Romans. Look, I'm pretty excited personally. The just will live by faith. And there's so much about not being there's therefore no, no, now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And the revelation that comes out of Romans will truly be a lifelong blessing. All right, I love you guys. We appreciate you. I'll see you tomorrow. Part two, Book of Romans, chapter one. All right, God bless. Peace. Woo.